Now, welcome to a special edition of Let's Talk Some Star Wars, where in a minute we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll that asked you to rate the Clone Wars movie from 2008. And the reason why this is a somewhat special edition is because I hope to kick off yet another mini-series, I guess you could call it, where the goal will be to rate or rank the different story arcs from the Clone Wars. And the way I hope to accomplish that is similar to how I've been doing the character videos or the Battle of the Heroes and Villains series. And so for this, I'll let you all pick a story arc by nominating and voting in the comments below. And you can already head down there to do that if you'd like. And once that's done, I'll put up a poll, let it run for a good week or so in case you want to rewatch the episodes before voting and commenting. I'll be rewatching them myself. And then I'll make a video going over and comparing or ranking the results, and then reading and responding to some comments as well. However, I don't know that I'll do all the story arcs from the Clone Wars. Mainly I'm aiming to compile a top 10 list, and theoretically, the first 10 that end up winning the vote should be the best 10, or 10 highest rated. Also keep in mind we already did do the Siege of Mandalore. That poll was a question a couple weeks ago, though I did ask everyone to think of it as a movie, but I don't know that thinking of it as a story arc instead of a movie would really change anyone's vote or opinion or anything like that. So unless there's some serious objections in the comments below, the score it got in that video, which was a 4.75, will stand. Okay, but for now let's get to the results of the poll asking about the Clone Wars movie, and I will be considering this a story arc and including it in the overall rankings, though since it's highly unlikely to finish in the top 10, I won't be counting this towards the total number of arcs we end up ranking, and hopefully that all makes sense. Anyway, let's get to the results, where we'll see that only 5% of people gave the Clone Wars movie 5 stars and thought it was amazing, 22% gave it 4 stars and thought it was good, 51% of people thought it was average and gave it 3 stars, 18% said it wasn't very good, and a final 4% thought it was flat out terrible and gave it 1 star. And so when we do all the math here, the Clone Wars movie ends up with an average score, almost a perfectly average score as a matter of fact, of 3.06 stars. And for fun, let's compare it to all the other Star Wars films that we've already done, where it would fall into 7th place overall, and ahead of all the sequel films as well as Solo and Attack of the Clones. And yes, I do realize these results might be skewed, that this is just how those who watch my videos rate the films, but it's still rather interesting to look at. Alright, and now let's move on to some comments. And as always, a big thank you to everyone who votes, comments, and watches. And now let's start, as we always do, with the top-rated comment, which this time comes to us from C. Manzella, who said, I re-watched it recently and honestly it didn't hold up compared to when I was 9 years old. Plot was really weird and felt childish, but I also have to give it props for making it possible for the Clone Wars series to exist, which turned out much better than the movie. And this one comment perfectly sums up what a great many people had to say, because there were a lot of comments that said something about how they first saw the movie when they were really young, maybe 9 or 10 years old, and they loved it. But now they go back and watch it, and though they still love it or have a soft spot for it, they can see a lot of flaws with it, or understand why maybe it wasn't so popular or such a big hit with older fans when it first hit theaters. I mean, I myself was 30 when this originally came out, and though I wouldn't say that I hated it or thought it was terrible, I certainly wasn't all that impressed by it either, nor was I any longer really all that excited for the series that was promised to follow it. But of course, if not for this, shall we say, humble beginning, we never end up with all the amazing episodes or story arcs we'd eventually get. Which then brings us to this comment from Samuel Tobar, who said, The movie was an introduction to Ahsoka and the Clone Wars as a whole. It is not a great movie, but it did its job. Three stars. There was also this one from Mailman123, who said, Your reckless little one, you never would have made it as Obi-Wan's Padawan, but you might just make it as mine. One of my favorite scenes never fails to get me emotional knowing all that happens between them. And I know I've shared this story a few times before, but after watching the Clone Wars movie for the first time, I was not a fan of Ahsoka, to put it mildly. In fact, I remember thinking that the best way to end this series eventually, someday down the road, and do keep in mind George Lucas said from the start that he wanted this to overlap with or run into Revenge of the Sith, that I wanted to see Darth Vader kill Ahsoka someday, because she was just that annoying. And though, as I've also said before, I don't really think the intent was to make Ahsoka quite that irritating or annoying to so many people, clearly the idea though was to make her a bit childish and to give her plenty of room to grow and to develop 
as the Clone Wars went on, which she did. And I don't even know how or when my opinion of her started to change. It's that whole frog in a pot of boiling water thing, where you don't realize what's happening until it's too late. But one day I just realized that, wow, I really like this character suddenly. And when she walks away from the Jedi Order, I was shocked and devastated like so many other people were, I think. And it's almost amazing how our, the audience's journey with Ahsoka, mirrors Anakin's own journey with her, where at first he finds her annoying but almost begrudgingly accepts her, and maybe doesn't realize just how much she means to him until she walks away. And so we understand why it was so hard for Anakin to let go of her, when we didn't want to let go of her either. It was truly a brilliant feat of storytelling, I think. Alright, moving on now, we have this comment from Garrett Carter who said, The first 25 minutes are easily the best of the movie. The second after they leave Christophsis, the movie gets worse. The lowest point by far was Ahsoka's annoying snipes at Anakin and the burping baby in the middle of a dogfight. With that said, the first five seconds of the movie with the clones yelling for reinforcements over the Lucasfilm logo and bleeding into the long time ago in a galaxy far, far away text was surprisingly haunting. And I do agree in both cases. The first 25 minutes or so, which is mainly the Battle of Christophsis or the conclusion of it, there's actually a couple episodes that precede the movie on the timeline that deal more with this battle. Anyway, overall it's probably the best part of the film, though a lot of the stuff on Teth is very good as well. The real issue with the movie is just the overall story with Jabba's son not being all that interesting or exciting, especially for a film. And I do like the clones yelling for reinforcements over the Lucasfilm logo at the start. It was cool then and it feels, as you say, almost haunting now, especially in hindsight for some reason, now that we know how it all ends. Moving on now we have this comment from Gyroscope Infinite who said, Three stars. It doesn't really feel like a movie, more like several episodes mashed together. Kinda ironic since the last arc of this show feels like a movie divided into four episodes. I'd give it a higher rating if it was just an arc. And it is very ironic indeed that the Siege of Mandalore felt far, far more like a movie and, let's be real, deserved a theatrical release more than the actual Clone Wars movie did. And you are 100% right, and as many pointed out, the Clone Wars movie is just four episodes kind of smashed together. Episodes that were not created with the original intent of being made into a movie, which very much feels like the case when you're watching it. Okay, and next up here we have this comment from Cyclops Ranger who said, For those saying that this is good because without it we wouldn't have the show, while that is true, I think the score should be based solely on the actual quality of the movie, which I think if everyone voted based on just the movie quality, then the score would be skewed much worse than it might already be. And there were a lot of people, as mentioned, that said they saw this as a kid and they loved it then and they still love it today, which is cool. We all have those movies, I think, from our childhood that we loved then, and when we watch them now, maybe we realize they're not so good. I mean, I loved the Masters of the Universe movie, even though it's really not much of a He-Man movie at all. They're on Earth most of the time, actually. In fact, it's pretty much a terrible movie, or He-Man movie, which I even realized then, but I still liked it and still have a place for it in my heart today. But being completely objective about it, it's a really bad movie, and though I don't think the Clone Wars movie is as bad as that is, at least it passes as a Star Wars story, whereas that really didn't pass as a He-Man story. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is, if looked at completely objectively and taken out of the larger context of Star Wars, and what Clone Wars and some of the characters in it eventually became, no, it's not a very good movie. But people are of course still free to love it and enjoy it as much as they want. And that then brings us to this comment from Matt Solid VA, who said, I hate to be a harsh critic, but I cannot use my nostalgia Google for this since this was released when I was six and I obviously turned my brain off when I watched it then. This movie is not good and honestly was a pretty bad intro for the Clone Wars series. The main plot was extremely boring, like rescue Jabba's son, really? And the whole purpose was to introduce Ahsoka and I guess Rex as well, which they did not succeed in since people ended up hating Ahsoka because she was very annoying, and Rex barely did anything and was just known as that clone with cool armor that didn't die in the movie. The animation was also pretty bad, but I will give it a pass since the creators were just getting started. Overall, I'd give the movie two stars, but because of what it ultimately achieved by creating the Clone Wars series and fleshed out Rex and Ahsoka, I raise it to three stars. 
We also had this comment from Jesse Hodgson who said, As much as I love the show, the movie was absolutely terrible. When my father took us to watch it, he teaches video productions, he thought it was the worst movie he had ever seen. Because of the movie, I have been having a hard time to get him to watch The Clone Wars. I finally got him to watch Season 7 and loved every bit of it. I liked the movie as a kid and I can appreciate its impact on the Clone Wars series and how it started at all. Two stars, terrible movie. There was also this comment from Nathan Brasher who said, That movie alone kept me from watching the following series for almost 10 years. It was awful. I rate it even lower because the effect it had. I honestly think Clone Wars series would have had a larger following without it. That being said, I love the series, which says a lot because I was highly skeptical prior to watching it. And this was another very common theme in the comments, that the movie actually turned a lot of people off to the series, and they didn't go back to watch it until years later. And there's probably still some people out there today who refuse to watch the series because of that movie. And finally here we have this comment from CD Freedom who said, The movie was where they were at the beginning in terms of story, character development, and animation. It took some time, but the series undoubtedly became great, even if it didn't start out that way. You don't expect great things to start off perfectly, you just have to keep going. And I think we can all agree, no matter how thick your nostalgia glasses are, that the Clone Wars movie was not the greatest start to what would turn out to be some truly fantastic Star Wars, with many arcs along the way being some of the best Star Wars you'll find anywhere. And it's going to be very interesting to see how some of these story arcs score, and what the top 10 ultimately looks like. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think of the Clone Wars movie, or what I or anyone else here had to say about it. Or head down to the comments to nominate or vote for which story arc we should do first. Either way, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.